Hello there, my fellow drop troopers, and welcome to another video where we discuss the famous regiments hailing from the world of Elysia. In today's episode, I wanted to focus a bit on the particular war gear of the Elysians, including their unique equipment as well as their standard equipment. I am your usual host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn what these guys used to fight, shall we? All Elysian drop troops are armed with the Mark IV Akatran pattern LAS gun. 5. Charge Cells Not every world in the Imperium maintains the capacity to manufacture a charge pack capable of releasing a limited laser charge at a time. Some must make do with individual cells that expand their entire capacity in a single rapid burst. These ones have sufficient energy for a single laser shot and must be charged after every firing. Mark 12 Carapace Armor Carapace armor is generally a sign of status and is mostly worn by Imperial officers and agents of the Inquisition. Elysia is a wealthy world and spares no expense in outfitting its troopers. Made from molded plates of armor plas, ceramite and other strong materials, it can cover the entire body or just sections depending on the desired level of protection. Stormtroopers, for example, wear full bodysuits including the helmet, while most soldiers are lucky to gain access to even a single chest plate to wear over the more comfortable mesh or flak wave suits. Some bodysuits have slots designed for a simple carapace plate to be inserted in so that the overall suits can be rapidly reconfigured for as much or as little protection as desired. Damaged plates can be more easily replaced without requiring the purchase of a whole new suit. The Grav Chute A Grav Chute relies on anti-gravitic suspensor fields to counter the pull of gravity and slow its user's descent to a planetary surface. Two small jets on either side above the shoulders offer extra braking and maneuverability as well. Unlike a true jump pack, however, grav chutes are designed only to allow the user to land safely from a long fall, such as a combat drop from a transport, rather than leap into the air and begin powered flight. Type 5 Pressure Helmet Elysian drop troops are equipped with these specially crafted helmets, which come with inbuilt respirators and breathing apparatuses. They are intended for low oxygen, high altitude drops, or for deployment in hostile environments like the vacuum of space or on worlds with toxic atmosphere. The Microbead a microbead, or combead, is a short range radio wave communication device worn in the ear, good for communication for about 1 kilometer. Each one fits discreetly in the ear, with higher craftsmanship models nearly undetectable at casual inspection. The Photovisor These advanced lenses are designed to increase the amount of light waves hitting the retina of the eye, which enhances low light vision to the point where, even on the darkest nights, the user can see almost as well as in full daylight. The Combat Knife this is the backup weapon of many a soldier across the Imperium and beyond. Ironically, not all Imperial Guard regiments actually have these as standard issue equipment. 3. Frag Grenades Frag grenades use a combustible charge and special fillers of shrapnel fragments to fill a given circumference with deadly shards that prove to be potent anti-personnel weapons. Imperial frag grenades are roughly the size of a clenched fist and covered with a heavily notched shell, both to increase the shrapnel produced and provide a more secure grip for throwing. Free Smoke Grenades These release a dense smoke which only obscures basic eyesight and optical-based systems. They do not block heat detection systems or other spectral bands outside of normal human eyesight but are much more widely available and easier to construct. Mark IV Combat Backpack This combat backpack is comprised of durable metal composites and contains the soldier's air supply, vox caster, and any other vital supplies like rations and water. This piece of equipment was designed to be used in conjunction with the Type V pressure helmet. The Vox Caster 
A Voxcaster is a standard and reliable radio wave communication device used to transmit over long distances, including to and from orbiting vessels. This allows communication with other Imperial personnel who possess Voxcasters. The range of one of these is about 100 kilometers, although better crafted variants exist that have longer range. Elysian Imperial Guard uniform, poor weather gear, basic toolkit, mess kit and water canteen, four weeks rations. The survival kit. When working in harsh and extreme planetary weather conditions, survival suits are a must for Imperial Guard personnel. No matter if it is too hot or too cold, the suit can maintain proper body temperature and hydration via its excellent insulation capabilities. Using the differential between body temperature and outside temperature to drive thermoelectric power cells, the suit also has reclamation systems for turning sweat into drinkable water. Most survival suits come complete with a hood, as well as goggles to protect the head and face. While it does not protect forever, for medium duration emergencies it can help sustain life until rescue comes. Blanket and sleeping bag, a rechargeable lamp pack, a grooming kit, dog tags, and the Imperial Infantryman's uplifting primer. Like I said in the beginning, drop troopers are armed with Mark IV Akatran pattern las guns with a standard issue of 5 power cells. Grenades are issued in a more ad hoc fashion and can be provided to the grenade launcher as needed. Elysian drop troopers generally deploy in a 10 man squad formation, which includes 9 troopers and 1 sergeant, with 1 trooper carrying a special weapon. Among the special weapons available to the Elysians are the Mark IX Akatran pattern mortar, the Mark V-D Akatran pattern heavy bolter, the Mark II Akatran pattern missile launcher, the Mark VIII Akatran pattern melta gun, the Mark II Akatran pattern plasma gun, the Mark IV-E Akatran pattern modified sniper las gun, and the Mark I-C Akatran pattern flamer the canisters for which are worn on the back. The Elysian drop troops regiments are known for their rapid deployment capability using airborne troop carriers called Valkyries, and they deploy from these aircraft by repelling or making use of grav chutes at high altitude. Elysian drop troopers are able to strike deep into enemy territory, and so are unable to field any heavy ground vehicles during missions. While this may be the case, the Elysians do make use of a number of light vehicles, including the Taurus Rapid Assault Vehicle, the Modified Drop Sentinel, Cyclops Demolition Vehicle, and Sentry Gun Batteries. The Elysians can make use of Valkyries, Vulture Gunships, and the support of the Imperial Navy to make up for their lack of heavy armor. The Elysians can capture objectives rapidly by dint of overwhelming force and close-range firepower. They often rely on demo charges and special weapons for tank busting. Vultures, Valkyries and other Imperial Navy aircraft pack fearsome amounts of firepower, and swooping over the battlefield they can target pretty much anything. Tactical flexibility is the Elysians' true advantage over most other forces and there are few tactical situations, other than a drawn-out planetary siege, that the Elysians cannot counter quickly and effectively. Elysian drop troops do not engage the enemy in conventional firefights. Instead, they seek to take objectives by rapid, hard-hitting attacks, and then hold with grim determination and the selective targeting of enemy threats. Casualties will often be high among Elysian regiments as a result of this strategy but that is the price Elysian drop troopers pay for their extreme mobility. And lastly, before I finish the video, I also wanted to recommend to you some reading material, or in this case, more like listening material, concerning the Elysians. The first of these comes in the form of an audiobook, or audio drama, called Scions of Elysia, written by Chris Downs. In this one, we have one unit of drop troopers ordered to hunt down a pirate warband. However, their commander is rather arrogant and unwittingly allows disaster to happen. 
This leads to a more experienced officer named Sergeant Zachariah to save the day. The second recommendation is actually the sequel to Scions of Elysia, another audio drama called Renegades of Elysia, also written by Chris Downs. In this story, we once again have Sergeant Zachariah and his men who are sent on a very dangerous reconnaissance mission. Finally, we have the short story Monolith by Chris Downs, where Sergeant Zachariah and the Elysian 158th must battle a Chaos Space Marine warband who are investigating mysterious monoliths on an Imperial planet. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the war gear of these regiments. Would you enjoy fighting as one of them? What makes them appealing to you? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more content. I thank you very much for watching and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.